Good evening and welcome to We The People Prepping. This is Dan. Tonight, let's have a little discussion about a prepper stash. Okay, I've heard a lot of people uh, commenting on things that they would uh, put in their stash. And I, I gotta say, I've heard a lot of idiotic stuff that people want to stick in their prepper stash. Now, my most of my prepper stashes, I have a few totes that I that I bury. They're they're sealed totes that that are waterproof. But my general prepper stash is a six-inch PVC pipe, uh, six inch around, uh, and uh, it's generally three maybe four foot long at the most. On one end I, I have a sealed flat cap. On the other end I have a sewer pipe clean out uh, cap that has a screw piece that you can take off of it. Okay, You can generally get that off with a, a crescent wrench. Now, okay, I've heard people talk about they're going to uh, make prepper stashes and put their handheld freedom devices inside these prepper stashes. Now that to me is just stupid. Okay, honestly, uh, because, okay, think about this. Now, say the, that nothing is happening in the world or whatever, and somebody comes across your prepper stash. Okay, they, they for whatever reason, were digging wherever you had buried it. Okay, now they open it up. And now they have your handheld freedom device. Okay, now if this is a registered handheld freedom device, and they go out and they commit a, a crime with this handheld freedom device, who is it going to come back on? Okay, it's not going to come back on them. It, the, the handheld freedom device is not registered to them. It's registered to you. See my point? I have found other people's prepper stashes. Okay, when I went out to bury mine. Okay, now, since I'd found theirs, I put it back. I didn't mess with it. I, I just put it back, buried it back, and I found a different place to bury mine. Okay, now, the things I generally put in my uh, prepper stashes are I will put the freedom seeds in there okay but they're the freedom seeds for my everyday carry okay so you know I'm always going to have that device on me it, so if if it hits the fan I know I'm going to have at least that device so that that's the freedom seeds that I bury in my prepper stash is for my everyday carry. That way I know I'm going to have, and generally I only put one box in in each stash because the freedom seeds are expensive as hell. Okay, and then uh, I'll put, you know, uh, a uh, tactical knife, uh, tarp, some paracord, you know, uh, fire starting device, at least two generally, and I will put, uh, you know, uh, some emergency mylar blankets, uh, let's see, what else do I put in there, I mean, of course I put food in there, I put uh, some bottled water in there, I also put in a water, water filter in each one of them. It, it gets expensive building these prepper stashes, let me tell you. Uh, which is why I try to, to limit myself on how many I actually bury. Uh, and and I, I think it through about where I'm going to bury my, my prepper stashes. Okay? So, but you know, you get the idea. It, it should be things that you are actually going to really need in an emergency. You're going to need food, you're going to need water, you're going to need a way to purify water. You know, you're going to need shelter, which is where the tarp and the paracord come in. 
you know, uh, a lot of times I'll put tent stakes in there as well so that I, I got something to, to tack the tarp down with. You know, you can buy, they're, they're like 25 cents a piece out at Walmart for the little steel ones, you know. But, uh, you know, it should be, it doesn't have to be everything in the world. It's got to be put in here. Okay, I, I don't need everything in there. Okay, like I don't need to put a camp stove in there. I don't need to put propane in there. Okay, I've got plenty of kindling out here in the wild. Okay, I got I put my fire starting devices in there. You know, maybe, you know, well, I, I take these uh, M&M tubes, the little uh, mini M&Ms. They, they come in a tube about like that. You know, they're about that big around or so. I put Vaseline and cotton balls in them, and I put that in the tube. Now I got some something to start a fire with as well. So even if I got wet kindling or whatever, I'm still going to be able to start a fire. Okay. I only put in there the things that I'm actually going to need at that moment. You know, food, water. You know, uh, of course I'm going to need a knife. You know. I'll, I might need some freedom seeds. I may not have but a clip or two with me, you know, uh, so, or it, I should say magazine for those of you that are sticklers for, for the verbiage of it, okay, uh, anyhow, back to my point, you know, uh, if it's, if it's going to be, ex you know, now, I, I generally will put, you know, like uh, emergency ponchos, and a lot of times I do put a uh, uh, small wool blanket in there as well. But, uh, you know, you can only fit so much in a tube, you know. So you got to think logically, what am I going to need, you know, most out of everything? I'm going to need shelter, I'm going to need food, and I'm going to need water and a, a way of protecting myself. Boom. That's what you need. You don't need to, you know, stick a handheld freedom device in there. That That's, to me, that's stupid. Besides that, I mean, you know, if you don't vacuum seal that device, you know, then you could wind up with the problem of, you know, if moisture gets in there, then, hey, your device is going to get all rusted up. You know, it may not even work whenever you go to use it unless it's a, uh, you know, well, I, I won't say the word. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, a revolving freedom device. How's that? Uh, but, you know, now my bigger stashes, I still don't put a, a handheld freedom device in there. Okay, uh, because those, the, the bigger ones are, I bury closer to my bug out locations. Okay, now I have three main bug out locations, but I also have a few backup locations where I would be, I would not necessarily have shelter. I would be kind of out in the, the woods somewhere, you know, uh, I, like I said, I won't give locations or nothing like that, and nobody would, but, uh, you know, my main three have shelter, food, and water, and all that. Now, two of them are uh, friends, that ha it's their bug out locations, and they've, they've agreed to let me, if need be use that to come to their bug out location the other one my main one is property i own out in the middle of nowhere you know i have a couple of years food stored up there already you know i i have fresh water from an artesian spring you know in the well and the well has never ran dry uh, it's actually got a couple of wells on the property you know, and if need be, there is a creek that runs through the property, uh, so there's water there. Uh, you know, and I got plenty of room. I, I've got seeds stored up there as well. You know, uh, but my point is, 
my bigger pepper stashes are in the locations where I would have to stay, where, where uh, you know, the big totes filled with food and stuff like that, you know, food and, and clothing and blankets and tents and stuff like that. Those are, you know, in totes, like all, all my my tents and my, my sleeping bags and all that are in one tote, buried. Food in another tote, buried. Water in another tote, buried. You know, you know, everything that I need to go along with those is all buried there. And there's fire starting devices and all that. But when you are making these, think logically. You're not going to be, you know, you want to put stuff in there that you can pack with you. You know, uh, put emergency rations in there as well. I do. I, I put lifeboat uh, provisions in, in each one of them as well as regular food that uh, is shelf-stable, you know, like dehydrated food. And, uh, you know, I, I know this one's going to piss off uh, angry pep prepper, but I put spam in there. I love my spam. Uh, you know, I, I put uh, beans and rice and stuff like that. Now it's all vacuum sealed with oxygen absorbers and all that. So I know it's all going to be good when I when I go to get to it. You know, now, generally, about every two years, I'll dig up my stashes and replace the water. You know, and check on the condition of everything. You know, uh, sometimes I swap out food. You know, like the spam and stuff like that. I'll take out the older cans, put in newer, take the old ones home and eat them. You know, uh, now see the way I do it though. From where I live to my bug out location, my main bug out location, is 20 or so miles. Now generally what I do is right outside of where I live, right outside of my town, I have a location where I have a stash buried in case I am not able to grab what I need when I'm leaving the house or, or whatever. Okay. Now, my next location, since it's only about 20 or so miles, is about five miles away. And my next location after that's another five miles. Okay. Because it can, depending on if I have kids with me or, or not, you know, it could be five miles a day instead of ten. You know, it all depends on the, the situation and the weather and all that. So about every five miles equals out about right. You know, I have, and I have all of my locations, like I, in my video that I'd made once before, I have a binder in my bug out that has the locations marked and topographical maps as of where all of my stuff is located, as well as uh, I also take, like I said, pictures of the exact location where I buried my stuff, so that I can look at the picture and say, oh yeah, okay, this is exactly where I buried it, okay, so I can dig it up. <coughs> now, I have, uh, for my secondary and third and so forth, I have prepper stashes that are about every five miles apart to get to those as well. Okay. Now see, all of, all of my locations are within a what, 70 mile radius of where I live. So I've got locations everywhere that I can go to, you know, uh, but I've got stashes about every five miles along the way. Five miles works out just fine. Trust me on that one. You know, but uh, you know, I have all my locations marked on topographical maps. You know, I have pictures of my locations. I have everything that I need. And you know, um, I had a lot of times I do put solar chargers, just the little handheld solar chargers, with a uh, USB cord in my prepper stashes just in case I need them all right but think about what you will need the bare minimums of what you will need to get you to where you're going for your prepper stashes okay now once you 
are at your bug out locations, whether it's out in the woods or wherever, you should always have a big stash of food and supplies at that location. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of digging, but and make sure your stuff is sealed good. Like I said, all my stuff has weatherproof sealing, but I still vacuum seal everything that I put in there. Yes, even my blankets and sleeping bags and all of that, I have the big uh, vacuum bag things. You know, you stick your stuff in there and then you stick your vacuum to it and suck the air out of it. And it, I have those. I put, a, I put my stuff in there. I flatten it out as best I could can. Vacuum seal it down as good as I can. Then I roll it up, stuff it down in there. It works. Trust me. It works. I've been doing this for a long time. But, you know, I, I've heard some of the stupidest stuff that people are going to stick in these uh, prepper stashes. Prepper stashes are meant uh, for emergency use. They're not meant for long-term survival. Okay, so, you know, I, I believe everybody should have an everyday carry. So, you should always have your handheld freedom device on you. Okay. Now, I, I also have, uh, I also put freedom seeds in there, a lot of my stashes for my long boom sticks shall we say. Okay, and my main one that I would grab is the one that I put uh, the freedom seeds in for. Now, if I don't get to grab it, well, hey, I've got, you know, my freedom seeds. I can always use them for barter if I need to. You know, it's, you got to be smart about it, people. So, I, I just had to make this video because I got tired of hearing people talk about the stupid things that they would put in there and I'm not calling you guys stupid I'm just think, saying if if you were planning on putting a handheld freedom device in there you were not thinking clearly okay you got to think about the repercussions if somebody finds your stash and what you would be out if they found your stash and what could happen if they use the stuff in your stash okay that's why like I heard one person say well you know I'm gonna make a prepper stash and I'm gonna stick uh, copies of birth certificates and social security cards and all that in there and I'm sitting here thinking oh my god somebody finds your stash they dig it up now they've got your identity you know why would you do something like that y you see what I'm saying that's what I'm saying. I've heard people say some stupid stuff that they're going to stick in there. You know, the you know important papers like that, keep them in your bug out bag. You know, vacuum seal them if you got to, do whatever, you know. But do not bury important paperwork like that. You know, now I have stuck precious metals in some of my stashes. You know, in my main stashes, I don't put them in the in the tube stashes that I that I use to get to where I'm going. I put them in my main stashes that I bury in the you know in the totes. So, but uh, you know, I I do put you know a lot of times I'll put like a, a twenty dollar bill in my tube stash. That way, hey, I got a twenty if I need it. You know, but. Uh, you know, just honestly, people, stop and think before you do these things. You know, now with every one of my tubes that I bury, in order to get that screw piece off of there, you're going to have to carry a, a crescent wrench in your bug out bag. Okay, which I do, but I I have a, a few places where I just bought a cheap crescent wrench like five bucks I vacuum sealed it and then I taped it to the tube and then I buried it that way say I lose my bug out bag or whatever I get to my prepper stash hey I've got a way to open it you know 
know, and five bucks, I mean, it ain't going to kill me, you know. Hell, I've found crescent wrenches for three dollars before, so I mean, you know, all you need is enough to be able to open it. That's all you need. But I hope I've given you something to think about tonight. You know, and I really do want people to start planning this stuff out. You know, because things are getting bad in this country, and you never know when you might need this stuff. So make your make your tubes full of of your preps. Take them out. Bury them, mark it on a map, take a picture of the the area, print that all out, put it in a binder in your bug out bag so you've always got it. Okay? Because I don't want to see any one of you, you know, stranded without anything. I, mean, I know it's hard to believe because I really don't know most of you, but I care. You know, I really do care about people. And I don't want to see anybody doing without starving to death, you know, uh, freezing to death, whatever. You know, so please prepare now. Okay. Lay in as much preps as you can at your home. Get you a bug out location, even if it's a friend's place. You know, talk to your friend that lives out in the middle of nowhere. Say, hey, look, if the shit hits the fan, you know, can I come to your home and and, and ride it out? And tell them, look, I, I will bring my own supplies and store them here at your home. That way you won't have to worry about feeding me or anything while I'm here. You know, now, like I said, I, 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 I put seeds heirloom seeds in, in all of my stashes, you know, my main stashes. I, at my bug out locations, I have heirloom seeds so I can plant huge gardens. But, you know, just start planting out, people. You never know. I mean, look at, nobody thought in 2019 that 2020 was going to be off the chain like it was. I mean, how many of you actually thought you were going to get locked down and lose your jobs and, and all of the crap that's happened over 2020? Now, do you, you know, 2021 is not looking any better. Honestly. So it's better to start preparing, get this stuff done, and get it done quick. You know, now I'm not telling you that it's too late because it's not too late. The only time it's ever too late is when you're dead. Okay? So, you know, make your plans. Plot out your routes. Get your preps together. Get done what needs to be done. That way you have peace of mind and security. I wish each and every one of you a blessed night. God bless you. Keep you safe. This is Dan with We the People. I'm out for now.